and I'm here on my editing station and I'm always super excited to edit photos that I know are going to turn out great. This is how I do it and how you do it might be different and you might have a better way of doing it and that is totally fine. But I'm trying to show what works for me and it might help you so thanks for watching and let's now tune into Adobe Lightroom. Let's get this. Okay, I made this little collection here where I imported some of my favorite photos from today and they all look very similar, they all fade into white because of the fog and they have this moody dramatic feeling and I would just like to start with this one because this looks super cool. So I select it and I click D on my keyboard to edit it. Now we are here in the editing section and over here you see I have my presets and the pack that I'm using is my Tones of the Forest preset pack. Let's try Forest for the beginning. As you can see right away it looks pretty cool. There are obviously some things that we do now. So first up the shadows. I would like to bring them up a little bit because they are so dark now. So let's bring them up. Now I think they're fine. When it comes to the highlights I would maybe bring them down just by a few steps and then in overall it looks way, way cold or way bluish so let's make it just a little bit warmer and I apologize for one million little bits in this video but it's a little bit easier to explain it if I say a little bit. <laughs> And now I would say if I look at this, it looks cool, but we need some saturation because it, it is very desaturated. So let's start here with saturation. Let's just bring it down for a little bit. And the blacks are super dark, as you can see, they are totally black here in the foreground. So we are going to go to the curve here and bring that up so that we got some more details here in the foreground. But I would say I would like to have the foreground back and then have the middle layer, which is this one tree standing here. And then the back layer are the other trees with the fog. So I would say it's pretty good already. We still bring up the blacks because it's so black in the foreground. It's just deeply black. <laughs> and then we bring them up so that we get some more details in the foreground. But now I would like to bring the shadows down again because otherwise we have too much of a flat look if you bring all the black and shadow tones up. So let's bring the shadows down now. And I would say that looks great if we check out the before and after till now. Really, really cool till now. It has this dramatic white, this moody feeling that I really like. One side tip you might notice already by bringing the clarity up or down, you can achieve also a sort of dramatic look. Back in the days, that was like a thing. I like to bring that up to 100. And the cool thing is actually, if you bring it into the negative and reverse it, you achieve sort of like a very mushy, I don't know if that's a word, a very foggy soft look. It's also an interesting look, I will show it quickly. So if you bring this down as you can see, and I'm going to try something now later with a mask, but the overall clarity we are going to bring that up to plus 20 or plus 16. That's, that's perfect. Moving on to Hue, Saturation, Luminance, HSL tab. And I really like everything here. I would maybe play around with the set a little bit, so saturation. And I would bring up the saturation of the blues here in the background or in the middle ground. And so let's bring them up a little bit. And I would maybe bring down the greens here in the foreground, even though they are already desaturated. But let's try that out just by a little bit. And I would say that looks pretty great. In the luminance tab, we're going to bring the greens up so that we highlight them a little bit and give them more exposure. So let's take the greens and bring them up. And as you can see the foreground here, this grass or whatever this is comes up a little bit. And I like that. Then the split toning, I usually always have it at blue in the highlights. I just love blue highlights. I always do that. And I would say we could maybe try to go a little bit further, but I don't know if that is too much then in the highlights. I would leave that. And we are also going to leave the shadows, not change anything there. Then the sharpening, when it comes to the sharpening and noise reduction, I just leave it. I have everything set how I like it. You can close transform and lens correction. And then this preset applied some vignetting, which I think is cool to get this moody look. So vignetting is basically the black surrounding or the black you know what vignetting is, I don't need to explain that. And I think the amount was okay. I would leave it at minus 10, not too much, not too little. And here for this sort of photos, I don't like to use grain. When it comes to calibration, something that I've learned over the years, you achieve this very moody greenish look by bringing the green primary slider to the right side, but don't go too far with it because otherwise it will look a little bit weird. And I went too far with it in the past, just saying. And you see, if you bring that more towards this side, the greens turn more into the poisonish, greenish, and on here they turn more into yellowish. So I like to bring it more towards this side, but don't go too much. And with the blue, we all know it. If you bring it to the left side, you get the teal and orange look. And I like to go a little bit into that. I think it looks kind of cool. Now what I want to show you quickly is how you can use a radial filter to get a special look. 
and we are going to use the radial filter by clicking here and then we are going to click option and reset it because this is out of control here and then we are going to drag it or we are going to click and put it over our main subject which in this case is this beautiful tree and we would just like to have it over that tree and yeah that's perfect now what I would like to do is highlight the tree a little bit and bring down the clarity so that we get this muddy and foggy look that I talked about before I'm just going to bring up the shadows of this tree slightly but bring down the black so that it doesn't look that faded and maybe bring up the overall exposure just to highlight it and I want to bring the feather from the beginning on up because that's going to fade our effect with the rest of the picture and so let's bring that up and now let's try out bringing down the clarity how it looks like we're going to slightly bring it down as you can see it gets super muddy and I don't know it just kind of looks cool I would go to 25 and leave it there and that's basically it that's what I wanted to do I could now even go more detailed into this photo and use some more filters and masks and stuff like that but then the video gets too long and we don't want that so I'm just going to leave it here this is our first edit of the day moving on to the next photo they are always similar and I could just take the settings from the other photo and apply it here but we are going to try a different look or sort of like a little bit different and so we're going to see if fuck works here and I think it's pretty cool but there's some things that we need to do definitely. Starting with the basic correction, this looks very warm now, not cold anymore, so we are going to make it more cold. Going to the temperature and bring it more towards the blue side, I think that way it looks cool. And maybe it looks way, way greenish now, so let's maybe bring it a little bit towards the purple side in the tint. Okay, that's okay. And then the highlights, I would like to bring them up actually. Usually I always bring them down, but I would like to make this super white here. So if you bring them up, as you can see, not too much because otherwise it gets super blown out, but somewhere like this. And then the shadows, I would also bring them up because we lost all the details here in the shadows. So I would say that's fine. And then with the whites, I think they are fine here. With the blacks, we can maybe bring them also up by a little bit. As you can see, it looks way, way contrasty, but I like that sort of look for this photo. Maybe something that I usually don't do, but I'm going to bring the contrast slider down. When it comes to the clarity, this photo has too much of it and it doesn't fit here because if you look at, for example at this tree, so the foreground here, that just looks way sucked out. And so we might even try out to go into the negative with this one and get sort of like a way dreamy look. So let's see how that works out. So we're going to take the clarity slider and bring that down. As you can see, gets way less detail and just a little bit in the negative, I think minus 10 and it looks pretty cool. When it comes to the curve I would leave it here but one thing that I do is um, click here in the middle and set a key point and then bring that up to bring up the mid-tones. That way we get these mid-tones up a little bit. That's cool. When it comes to the HSL there's not much that I would like to do here. I would like to desaturate the greens a little bit here. So let's bring them down and once we did that we are going to bring the luminance of the same green tones up. Then the split toning, I think this is a super important tab, I always use this. And one tip on the side, if you're on a Mac, click option on your keyboard and then hold it and then click on the slider or on the key here and then you can see the color at 100% saturation and you can see which color you select. We're going to go into this bluish teal side, I think that is fine. And then now we can bring up the saturation and I'm just going to bring it up all the way to 30 so that we get this blue highlight which I really like. And then with the foreground, we maybe introduce some orange greenish tones and so option again. So maybe something like here and let's get just a little bit of that in there, not too much. Okay, that's fine. Sharpening is fine, noise reduction is fine. Again, we have some vignetting here, that is fine. And here when it comes to the calibration, that's also fine for this one. For this photo, I would like to show you a tool that I use a whole lot, which is a graduated, never know how to say, graduated filter. And that allows you to fade your photo. And I usually use this on the button on, on the top of the photo. I fade the button usually into black or into dark and the top into a white tone. And so how you do that, you click on here, this selects like this tool, and then you drag, similar to the radial filter, this, up there now you can see we have the button selected and it fades it and so let's bring down the exposure and as you can see it totally fades into black and then I would also like to bring down the saturation so that the foreground is less saturated and I think that looks pretty cool now the same thing with the highlights I do the same thing here on top a little bit crooked if that's worth and then we're going to bring it up but not too much 
just so that we get some fade look clicking F on our keyboard and that's our final photo looks pretty cool it is very punchy very strong different look than before not that soft but I don't know I like it I would post it on Instagram that was it, I hope you enjoyed this episode on my channel, I hope you could learn something out of it and I hope that this will help you improve your own editing and your own photography. So that being said, thank you so much again for tuning in today and I'll hopefully see you then in the next video. Have a great night or day or whatever. Peace. Just shoot.